Learning Pack Nation. I wanted to talk today about online reviews and just the misperceptions that you may have as a general public about veterinary medicine. And this all stems from a article I just read by a colleague of mine, Dr. Sarah Boston is a board certified veterinary surgeon and she wrote a wonderful article. I, I have a link in the description that everyone should read. It's about um, just online abuse um, in general and the effect it has. And it's taken from the sense that, as you all may be aware of, there's a huge, huge risk of suicide in my profession. We're multiple times more likely to commit suicide than anyone else. And part of that comes from the stresses of the profession and one of the stresses of the profession can be how the public perceives us and how individuals, it could be a sole individual writing a terrible, terrible online review about you, um, leads to then just a mass attack on a veterinarian. Um, so it's interesting because I'll be frank with you, um, my practice has had some interesting reviews. Most of them, I would honestly say, are not justified. It's interesting because everything is, as I always say, everything's multifactorial. So there's always a combination of misunderstanding. There's a combination of miscommunication. I think that is huge on the table here um, in veterinary medicine in general. So it, it was, it was a, we got a bad review because the perception of the client was that their pet was placed in a hospital cage for several hours until the mobile snarf got there. Where we failed is we we should have discussed when the ultra snarfer arrives. In many cases I've actually had the clients give us a 20 minute window that we can when the ultra snarfer calls we can have them come in. So that wasn't relayed to the client. That wasn't discussed um, at all. I had a, a team member that from a veterinary standpoint just didn't communicate well at all with clients. So when you start dealing with all that stuff, it led to a dissatisfied client who posted in, um, this person went everywhere and posted a negative review. So, you know, those types of things are definitely viable, um, but should have been discussed. And in the end, it wasn't a life or death situation, um, but the client made it seem that way and that was that's what was the detrimental thing for the for the practice the other one i had was i guess i'm fortunate that i haven't been involved in these incidents but um but it is my business um a client w was stating something that they came to find their forever vet or whatever blah 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 and was dissatisfied by this that and this and the irony of that the irony of that that client still comes into the practice and it's, it's difficult it's it's incredibly difficult when you when you post an online review like that to to bounce back from that, but, but those are only two justifiable ones I can think of. I think most of them are not justifiable. And the difficulty is, is that many millennials out there, or just people in general, what do you do? And I do this too. I review things. I, I look at at reviews to see what everything, everyone says about certain things. I've been fortunate that the people who have said they looked at a review say there's there's an overwhelmingly good review there. So, so that that's you know incredibly important but just to give you a mindset is that even though i know that some of these reviews are not justified they stay with me they're always with me um and it and it does lead to you know um certain feelings and and concerns and stresses about that um and the other thing that dr sarah boston brings up in her in her um article is that many of these online reviews are actually taken down so the so the general populace, you pet parents out there, really don't see what people are. And the example she uses is, is incredible. Um, I think it was a situation where it's, it, typically there's no funds involved. So the, so the client has no funds. There's a situation and they end up with a humane euthanasia. And that's, and I can go on a completely different show um, to talk about the benefits of, of health pet insurance and how that leads to a situation where you don't have to euthanize your pet. and that things can be covered but it's it's typically financial it's typically a situation of severe medical issue and there, there's a guilt from the client standpoint that they can't afford to pay for anything and then they take it out in the veterinarian um, and a point she does bring up that is clear and I get this all the time 
If you loved pets, you would do it for free. No other medical profession, no other profession. You know, if you if you go up to a, a if I went up to my mechanic and I said, listen, listen, man, if you love if you love Hondas, you would fix it for free or. You know, any, it, there's nothing, you know, I, I cannot even comprehend going to my medical doctor who's a friend of mine and saying, Ron, listen, man, if, if you, if you, if you like humans, you know, you would do my blood work for free. Unfortunately, not only is it impossible to do something free, and one of the fallacies we do as a veterinary profession is we do so many things for free, myself included. Our, our database, our software will indicate how much stuff we give away for free. And honestly, it's amazing, but it is detrimental because veterinary medicine to run a veterinary hospital is incredibly expensive. It's more expensive, and I've talked about this a zillion times, it is way more expensive than a human clinic to run a veterinary hospital because you're running a hospital and there's more people involved and there's way more equipment. So your overhead is way high and your profit margins are way small. So to do something for free is a loss. It's a huge loss, and yet we still do that. We do so many things for free. Um, so that's one thing the young vet mindset has to change. But but to say that is just, it's she, she uses the word gasp. It's an audible gasp that happens. That to, to say, hey, if you love pets, you would do it for free. That's just, you know, amazing, amazing. Um, you know, and the other thing is, is I'm, I'm gonna give a talk soon has nothing to do with online abuse, but part of it was polling vets um, about their feelings about referral to 24-hour referral centers. And a huge percentage of young veterinarians, well, not young veterinarians, it was, it was a wide range of veterinarians, they're actually concerned about the act of how they're perceived by their clients for referral because they're concerned about being sued or being taken to our board as a complaint. Can you believe that? It's like, it's that sort of mindset that's, that's out there. In our profession all we want to do is we want to do what's best for your pet and for you many of us may not be able to communicate that clearly and there's a strong bias in some of us that we look at what's best for your pet and really don't discuss or at some point sometimes acknowledge what's best for you and that's one of the areas that where communication is huge you know ideally I want to offer gold standard medicine to every pet that walks into the door Unfortunately, reality sets in and many owners, whether they can afford it, whether they choose it, whether they believe in it, will not do that. So you have to have that discussion. Many, many vets just want what's best for the pet and they have to talk about to the client as well. So we're striving for that, but there's a difficulty in us communicating with that. Um, so it's a work in progress, but it doesn't mean that your pet's best interests were never at heart and doesn't, by far, it doesn't mean that someone's trying to rip you off. Um, and we do feel like you wouldn't believe when a situation comes up. I've been in situations where a person walks in the door and has $50. That won't even cover the exam fee. So how do you deal with that situation? What sort of gut-wrenching consequences are there for not only the, the pet parent who I can guarantee it feels incredibly bad that they don't have money. Um, and the veterinarian who feels incredibly bad because they're, they're limited on what they're capable of doing. Those are the situations. So the bottom line is an education of the general populace that this exists. Please, please, if you're gonna do an online review, for those of you who love your vet, do an online review. Nothing is better than posting how much you love your vet. If you had an issue with your veterinarian, please talk to your veterinarian first. Putting a negative online review is, can be detrimental, can lead to ramifications beyond what you could even comprehend. Hope that makes sense, makes sense to me. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, love your pet like they love you, unconditionally.